In this video, I'm going to walk you through my process for creating a lettering-based illustration, starting from a rough sketch, taking it to a tighter sketch, then to some tightened line work, and then adding in some color to finish it all off. I'll be creating this illustration in Adobe Fresco on my iPad, but the process will be pretty much the same no matter how you're working. If you're new to this channel, my name is Chris Piasek. I've been an independent illustrator for the last 12 years. I've worked for clients like Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, Nike, Adidas, and tons more. Throughout my career, I've always incorporated a bunch of lettering into my work. For a while, lettering was sort of like my main thing. But what I really love to do is combine hand lettering with some illustrated elements and make it all into a little compact, little tight lockup jumble situation. And that's what we're gonna do in this video. So if that sounds interesting to you, you're in the right place. This video is a longer one, so I'm gonna put chapters in so that you can skip ahead to different points if you get bored in a certain section. All right, I'll meet you at the iPad. Okay, so my plan is to do an illustration for these Jawbreaker lyrics. So crazy, it just might work then we'll quit our jobs. I'm going to do a lettering illustration in the center and sort of like a jumble with a bunch of stuff happening outside of it. And whenever I'm going to illustrate any sort of quote, I always start by just writing it down quickly like this. I'm not thinking about the design or composition or anything like that. It's simply to just get a visual for the words and like see how much space each of them take up and just, I, I don't know, it's just sort of like a, a guidance. Um, I like to use a pencil type brush. I need to be in the sketch vibe and this pencil sets the mood. So the one that I use most often is this one called Kyle's Drawing Box Perfect Pencil 2. This is just one of Kyle Webster's uh, amazing brushes which are all available for free if you have the premium version of Adobe Fresco. Another thing you'll notice here is I have a favorites folder for my brushes. I find this to be super helpful because when you have a lot of different brushes can be pretty tedious to go through them and find the one you want. So what I like to do is when I'm on a brush that I use often and you select it, you can just hit this little star next to it and then it'll become one of your favorites. I just keep some brushes here in my favorites that I use the most often. So it's so much easier to find them, saves me a bunch of time. I'm gonna grab this sketching brush and I'm gonna change my color to a darker gray. And now I'm gonna start planning out a composition using this quote. So. I'm gonna scale this down a little bit smaller and just leave it over here so that I can reference it. And what I like to do now is like think about what is most important in the phrase, like what do I want to emphasize? So obviously crazy is sort of a key element here. So I'm gonna make that a focal point and then the rest of it, you know, can be pretty secondary, but there's some words that, you know, could probably be small, like maybe so and it just, because crazy is gonna be the focal point, I think I'm gonna start sort of using that as like a guide. So I might just like draw that word big and see if I can make some sort of interesting shape with it or design. So if it was a longer word, I may just like write it out simply in like bubble letters, not bubble, just like block letters. So I could get a feel for like this, the size, but I feel pretty confident in this because it's just a, a short word. So I'm just gonna go right in and start drawing it. So thinking maybe like this, I also am free to like work in, you know, whatever size I want because it's the only thing on this layer and I can just change the size. That's something I like to do, I like to keep things on separate layers as I'm working. So I'm not really thinking too hard about this. I'm just sort of kind of moving stuff around. When I'm sketching out a composition, I like to, to work smaller on my document so I can get a, a better feel for the whole thing. Um, also because I want this to be like a jumble of words and illustrations. You know, I'm not crazy <laughs> about this, but I'm just gonna get some other stuff on here to see if that'll influence what this looks like. So I'm gonna draw the word so. Maybe I'll just center it up top like that. And then I'm just gonna make a new layer because you can make as many layers as you want. And sometimes it's easier to not have to redo things. So maybe you would just like make it just it just might work. So I'm sort of thinking about how I, how it would be said or like how it goes. So it's like so crazy, it just might work. Does that make sense? You can sort of break it down however it makes sense to you. I'm starting to get like a shape. This right now is something that I might use as like a loose framework to start doing something, but it's, it's not that interesting right now. What I'll do now is merge this all down and then bring down the transparency. And now I'll try to like, just sort of analyze this and see what I can do to make it more 
interesting. Sometimes I'll like draw a shape on top of this. So on a new layer, I'm gonna like maybe emphasize this corner up here like that. I don't know, bring that down. Just trying to like work with what I have and make a more interesting shape. You know, that might be something. So I'll turn that op the opacity down on that and then start a new layer. Then sort of, I don't know, start drawing on top of that and see if that can get me anywhere. So I think I'll break this down a, a little bit by separating it just and might. So maybe if there was like a space over here where it just might fit. And then this R can kind of come down and break that up a little bit. Maybe we can do something with like the this leg of the R. I like to sort of make the letters interact with each other so it just feels more like a, a lockup. We can bring this C over here to just sort of use that space that we made. Maybe instead of this R coming down all the way, maybe we can have it like interact with the space, but then come back up to sort of separate the two. Oh, and then we can have it like connect with the Y maybe, like that. could be cool and then like maybe might could fit in there and we can just sort of use that negative space to get these other letters in but now we're maybe getting somewhere a little bit more interesting all right I'm gonna make a new layer to draw the the work part and see what we can do with this I don't want to make work on its own fill this whole space down here because i want crazy to be the biggest word but i think we can sort of maybe cheat by giving it like a, a 3d effect so the letters themselves can maybe not be that enormous on their own but like maybe we can do something like this to make that shape because i do think that that shape that i used was somewhat interesting. We've got this sort of shape happening and it's looking better than it was, but it's getting a little messy with all this stuff going on. So what I'm gonna do is merge those things down and then delete that initial sketch. I think I'll keep the shape for now, just to sort of help make sure that I stay on the same path. So I'm gonna bring down the opacity, make a new layer and draw on top of that again. This is a little hard to read because like it's it just, and then there's this big separation and the way it just is like locked in with the w it feels sort of like it just work and the might is i feel like it's a little too separated so i'm gonna try to figure out a way to kind of pull this together so what if we make the it just a little bit smaller this doesn't have to come down so far maybe might can kind of go across here like that so it just uh, maybe if this was like a script that part of the m could come over well, maybe we can just get wild and have this this r come all the way down and then instead of it connecting with the y maybe the y can just sit on top of it since we're going with the crazy vibe the letters maybe you should be a little, little crazier that are get a little wild over here. So see how this this the shape that we made goes in like this? That's sort of like a K. So what if we shorten this a little bit and then bring the K into that to make that corner? So as you can see, it's, it's a lot of noodling. There's a lot of noodling involved with this kind of thing. You're just sort of trying things out, moving stuff around seeing what's gonna work. So I already think this is better. It reads better, crazy, it just might. Those are together enough that it doesn't feel too separate. And then I think the so just being like centered up here is fine. I think we could sort of tie it in with like a, I don't know, a shape, maybe like a speech bubble. Always default to speech bubbles when needed. Okay, so I think this is in a good 
place structurally. So I'm gonna just fine tune it a little bit. So at this point, I'm gonna delete the last uh, sketch. I'm gonna delete this framework that we did because it served its purpose, but now I don't want it to get too tight to that. I don't want it to feel completely tied to that shape. I just want the shape to do like an underlying structure, but I want the letters to sort of break out a little bit so it has a little bit more energy, it's not too static. I think the, I liked the 3D situation on the work letter, so I think we can continue that and have it break out of that framework just a tiny bit. You may have noticed I left out the then we'll quit our jobs part. I think that's like sort of an afterthought thing and I'm planning on having lots of illustrated elements around this so maybe one of the characters will be saying that phrase to tie it all together. Okay so I'm going to turn off that initial sketch, the initial just phrase lyrics and I'm going to move this sketch over into the center and try to fine tune it a little bit. So as I mentioned, this lettering is gonna be surrounded by illustrated elements. So I want to make sure that it's like a solid shape. I want things to like pop out behind it, but I don't want it to get too busy by having stuff behind these letters. So I'm gonna make a loose framework for the crazy part. I think I'll keep the it just thing in like its own little box like this. I think that that works pretty well. So I'm gonna draw that in and then I'll make the frame for crazy go around that. So I'm gonna be something like this, be like top of the A. I'm not getting too precise here because I need to clean up these, the letter forms themselves, but like maybe. And then maybe the, maybe this box can have like a 3D element too. So like that can close off so we don't need to outline this part of the R. Maybe the R can, can actually end it there so that outline would just sort of go around the top part so i'm going to bring this opacity down i'm going to lower my sketch opacity even more so i'm going to try to figure out some of these problem areas so at this point i'm going to turn the smoothing up on my sketch my pencil so if you uh, are in your brush tool you'll see this little squiggly line here and this is your smoothing so if you turn this all the way up you can get a, a smooth line while you're drawing and since i'm trying to do a smooth line here this will be helpful I like to keep it down when I'm sketching because it slows down the brush process. So if you're trying to sketch out an idea quickly, it can make that annoying. So this is gonna be inside this framework. I'm gonna curve it around that part of the R and bring this down. I'm trying to maintain some sort of smooth curves. I think I'll make this top part of the R a little bit less wide than the A. And sort of come down like that. Just following these lines. The A needs to be shorter because this is the frame. Um, I think this is like a weird not curve, but like sort of a curve. And I think it should probably be more straight. I'm gonna go down to that framework layer and then just sort of add in that line as a guide. Okay, I think that is already looking quite a bit better. I think the Y is probably coming out a little bit too far on the right. I'm gonna turn off the sketch layer and then just kind of fine tune that a little bit. I don't know how helpful this kind of uh, process is because it's a little bit noodly and I don't know if it's it's helpful to see this this process or if it just seems like too willy-nilly and just like kind of making it up as I go to be helpful so uh, I don't know let me know in the comments if this is helpful content or if you would like to see more like this is exactly how you do it because to be honest with this sort of illustrated lettering and composition stuff like this uh, it's, it's a bit willy-nilly and sort of experimenting and playing around, so I don't know. Let me know. Keep breaking the rules here. This line is not to be drawn. That's our frame, our frame line. Okay, so I'm going to go in and fill in these letters with the paintbrush the color 
margin up as high as I can. Uh, it's not gonna be perfect because we're using a pencil line, so it's not that tight. Uh, I'm gonna close this off so I can fill that in. And then we can pull this little box over for it just. Then we're gonna do like that sort of thing. So I think this should be script so we can kind of extend that over like that. Get this G. The script actually works well for this because the H and the T can go up and fill that space. Do it just. And now let's uh, work on work. So I'm gonna move this over a little bit so it doesn't interfere with the G. Maybe we can be a little bit more playful with these letters, like rotate them a little bit like that. When we do the final tightened up sketch, I'll just shorten the, the tail of the G a little bit. All right, now I'll just sort of quickly map out like a 3D thing. Basically, I'm just drawing the lines, like this shape. Like, <laughs> basically, I'm just taking like this line, this line, and like moving it over a little bit and then just drawing lines to connect them. So for up here, it's a little bit more complicated. So I'll just draw this diagonal line to match that and just sort of come down about the same amount and then just pull that in. Like that. And then up here, I'll just draw lines to kind of follow the rest of the rest of that line. I'm just wondering if maybe this can go like that to frame the mite lettering a little bit. And then like maybe this could go like that. It just seems like they line up perfectly. So I think we can get that to work and it just, I like the way they connect and sort of interact. And then let's just move so up a little bit. Maybe you can go like that right there. All right, I think this is ready for a tightened up sketch. Then once we have the lettering part locked down, then I'll go in and do the illustrated elements. Some of the lettering is sorted out for the most part. I'm gonna go in and add some stuff to the outside, just some kind of fun, crazy stuff to go with the crazy vibe and just sort of try to go with the feeling of the lettering and make stuff sort of pop out in the spaces on the outside. Let's just get into it. I'm gonna make a new layer. I'm just gonna draw a crazy guy up here. We're just sort of making fun stuff pop out from the background to sort of just sort of go in with the vibe and then try to have it sort of feel balanced throughout the illustration, I guess. Maybe this is the thing that's saying the other part of the, the lyric. Then we'll quit our jobs. I think that's a little big. We don't want it to take away from or be distracting from the main thing. We got this indent, maybe we've got like a big monster mouth. Maybe it's looking down, it might eat the bunny. Like you can't quit your job. I'm gonna eat you. Maybe we'll put a, uh, a, sh a shark. Well, what if it's upside down shark? So crazy, it just might work. Oh, so maybe we can do something that goes along with the vibe of like, they're hoping it'll work so they can quit their jobs. We could do like a hope thing. So like, you know, fingers crossed for good luck. And put that down here. 
we can fine tune it later. We're in the sketch phase right now. Coming in from behind. Since we've got a rogue hand, maybe we need some rogue feet. Maybe have like a little bottom half of a body and then like, I don't know, some wiggly legs coming down. Some pants. Maybe it belongs to that. Maybe it doesn't. It's hard to know. Maybe a, a little monster head popping out over here. I think that's probably good for characters. And then maybe we can go in and add some other stuff like some like to do some clouds, some little rainbow squiggly lines, maybe some lightning bolts. Just sort of fill space, I guess. I don't know. Decorative elements just sort of to balance out the composition. I think these little squiggly lines, maybe they can be... These arms can be like wings or something like that. Just to add like a different kind of shape. Like a more angular shape. Maybe we can have some action lines coming off the sew. Maybe we have some drippy... I don't know, maybe it's drippy blood coming off the skull, the upside down skull. Not skull, shark. There might be a skull because of the shark. That's fine for this stage. So I can delete the old one. I'm not worried about emphasis on this one. I want it just to be simple and secondary. Now I'm just sort of like adding stuff to balance what's happening in other spots. Now that we have this all roughed in mainly, what I'm gonna do now is just tighten this up before we do the final line work. And here I'm just gonna sort of fine tune this and make it work together because we did it very quickly. I'll sort of decide maybe on faces or just position and figuring out what these things actually are because some things don't look like anything. For the stage, I'm gonna bring up the smoothing because I'm gonna be working slower anyway and trying to make some curved lines. I use the, the curve of the speech bubble here to tie into these squiggly hands, arms, squiggly arms. So I'm not doing too much detail here because I want to sort of maintain that improvisate Improvisate, improvisational feel on the final line work. So I want to like leave some stuff to figure out as, as I'm doing that, but just sort of wanting to get the overall like composition and like the shapes in place. So this feels like a good cohesive balance. Uh, still stayed pretty loose with the drawing and I'll tighten it up in the next phase. So I'm gonna delete all the stuff I don't need and then I'll merge this down. And now I'm just gonna trace over this. I'll do the same thing that I did for the sketches where I revised them, where I'll just bring down the opacity, make a new layer. Because this is all smooth shapes, I think I'm gonna contrast that with a little bit of texture mainly because I have been really liking this textured inking brush that I've been using a lot, which is the Retro Supply Co. Classic Inker. So I'm going to use that to do the final line work, and I'm going to have my smoothing turned all the way up to maintain that fluidity and smooth undulating curves. I'm going to turn this into high speed mode. You can follow along.
Before I get into color, I'm just going to go in and close up any of the shapes that are open that are behind this so speech bubble thing, and then I'm going to merge down anything that's not already combined. So I'm just going to close that box up, and I think that, oh, these um, little squiggly lines need to be closed up. Okay, I think that's it. So let me turn this back on, pull the so lettering back up. And now what I'm going to do is make a new layer below all of the line work. And I'm going to go to my line work layer and then select 
set as reference. So this is going to allow me to fill on the layer below. My process for this is usually to pick colors willy-nilly and start with one and sort of spread it out as much as I can and then go in and add more until it's full and then usually get indecisive and change them a few times. So we'll see. Picking a starting point is usually difficult, but I don't know. I'm going to start with this color that's just showing up in this random group of swatches that I don't know where they came from. Just going to go ahead and use my paint bucket and work my way around, not really overthinking things. I'm going to pick another color. Um, I'm going to pick a bluish color because it will pop against the red. I usually like a more greenish blue, so I think maybe that'll do. It was a nice little rhyme I didn't mean to do. Triplicate rhyme. Because I'm very indecisive about color, I'm going to make a new layer to make it even easier to color quickly if I decide that that is required. All right, well maybe let's just go ahead and do some of the white stuff. So I'll do a new layer for white and then just come in here and do some eyes and teeth. This is not that they have to be white. Sometimes I'll change the eyes a different color, but I'll just do them all white to start. I'm gonna go back to the red layer because I noticed this little drippy drip right here. Let's use some yellow. You don't have to keep using different layers for your colors if you're not as indecisive as I am, but I um, have a hard time making decisions with color, so this just makes it a little bit easier. I'm also realizing that I forgot that lettering and that thing I have to do. Maybe that'll be the first thing I do in yellow. I'll make a new layer for that. I'm just gonna try to just freestyle it without any sort of guide. We'll see if I fail. Let me know in the comments if you think I'm gonna fail. Hurry up, because I'm almost done. Uh, I think it's okay. I think it just needs a little bit of beefing up. A little beefaroni. Okay, so now I'm just gonna do some willy nilly filling. Willy nilly fill action to catch my drift. Maybe I'll make this other speech bubble yellow too. You'll notice that it filled like crazy because we have reference layers set, so I have to turn off the reference in order to fill in this. So now I can go back to this, turn reference back on, and go back to my yellow layer. So, so far we've got three colors. I don't like to add a ton of colors. I know my work seems pretty colorful, but I usually keep it to five or six, generally. I'm gonna go wild and start playing around with green. I usually don't use a lot of green, but it's 2023. Maybe this is the year. We haven't used pink yet. I like pink. Put some pink down here. We need pink for this tongue because I don't want to use red because it's the same color as that drippy red up there. So I think I want this to be blue, but I don't want that to be blue. So I'm going to go to the blue layer and I'm going to select that, erase it, deselect. And now I'm going to go back to my white layer. I'm going to make these uh, yellow to separate them from that white cloud background. So it's getting a little confusing with the colors at this point because I'm changing my mind a lot, but I think I'm going to stick with this color system to make things less complicated. So I'm going to go ahead and merge my color layers at this point so that I can finish it up real quicker. Okay, so I'm feeling pretty good about this. I think what I'll do now is go in and add a little bit of shadowy type situation. So to do that, I'm just gonna make a new layer. I'm gonna set that layer to multiply and I'm going to grab a light purple. And with this, I can just draw on top of everything and it'll give it sort of like a, a perfect shadow. So I'm actually gonna move it below that speech bubble so that I can make like a shadow dealy there. And as you can see, as it goes over all the different colors, it gives like a nice shadow effect. Now it might be a little dark. I may turn it down afterwards. For now, it's fine. So I just like to give some separation where things like overlap. I don't know. I'm not trying to make it look realistic. I'm not like rendering here. Just to give it a little extra touch. Try not to go too overboard, but you know. I'm kind of go in and just 
turn them down a little bit. Go in and add a little bit of extra color detail. So for example, I'm gonna make this nose red. Maybe dry rosy cheeks. I'm thinking that this, this little this little dude over here should have some spots or something. He looks sort of pickly, and I feel like that looks those look like pickles. Pickle dots maybe. But I don't want that to be the only place that I have texture like that, so maybe we'll put some like scales on this thing. It kinda looks like a fish. I have a bad habit of mumbling when I'm talking. I guess because I'm just sort of rambling. See if there's something over here we can add some texture to. I need to deal with the background. I don't love the gray. I don't know. Purple? One in doubt? That's pretty good. It's a little dark. I'm always conscious of not using a color too dark that'll hide the line work. And the line work is very important in my work. So I always want to choose colors that accentuate the line work. So I think I'm going to tone this down just a wee. Good. Let's turn off the reference layer. I'm going to go in and build these little burst things. I don't know if they should be yellow because they're coming off that. Maybe some of them should be white. Then these things over here. I'll do a layer on top and just add in a few highlights here and there. So like on the tongue. I think that's it. One of the great things about Adobe Fresco is that once you have a finished piece like this, you can easily go back in and add motion to really bring it to life. If you want to learn how to do that, check out this video that will walk you through the process. Oh, wait, hey, I forgot something. Good talk.